All right. So, as per most of my videos, I uh, tend to not bother making videos if a subject has been covered to death. So I, I, I like to not make videos unless uh, unless I feel like I, there's actually a good contribution I can make that uh, that hasn't already been made. Um, so this is going to cover uh, people that are doing uh, multi-textured packs. And uh, periodically you'll see questions on what's the right way to tape it off. Um, just know that none of this is is canon to the original props the original props they didn't i mean there was some multi-textured nature to it but not to the extent that the community does it um so none of it's technically screen accurate so if you're going for perfect screen accuracy you actually probably don't even really want to pay attention to this um the multi-textured approach is something that's sort of a um a community uh thing that uh, has come about but that being said um, in the new, in the afterlife, they kind of borrowed that from us. So we actually, the community's prop builds inspired what actually ended up on screen. Um, so that's, that's sort of a community embellishment. Um, and so, like I said, it's not technically screen accurate to the 84 or 89 movies. Um, so there's, there's really not a, a perfect right or wrong way to do this, but this is sort of the, what I'm going to show you is sort of uh, what's accepted by the majority of the people that are doing this. Um, this is sort of the community consensus on how it should be done. Um, I'm also going to cover uh, just a little bit of a theory, prop painting theory, if you will, um, just to kind of, uh, if, if you're new to prop painting or if you're looking to, if you're intermediate and you're looking to kind of bump up your game a little bit, um, I, I kind of want to talk about how I think about, uh, approaching paint jobs for props. Um, and the big thing that people don't realize when they get into the hobby is there is a massive difference between props that are painted for going on screen versus props that are meant to be looked up, or looked at up close and appreciated like at a, at a, at a con or something to that effect. Um, so a lot of times when you look at screen used props they don't look as good as you think they do they're meant to look good for five seconds while the camera pans past it real quick and so they're they're painted usually on the fly and they don't put a lot more effort into it than they need to unless it's for like a hero shot if it's meant for a close-up they'll put more effort into that but if it's just for a, a swipe by they're not going to sit and put a ton, ton of time and effort um, into, uh, into doing a, in, into doing a paint job on a prop like that. Um, so a lot of times they don't look as good as you think they do. Whereas if you're doing something that's meant to be appreciated or looked at on display in your house, or you're, you're wearing it to a con, people are going to go up and look at it. You might want to take some different things into consideration. Uh, one thing that I do, um, this is kind of just one of my back pocket tricks that I've, that I've kind of developed over time is that a lot of times if something has a smooth or a low texture, um, I like to do a base coat of this Rust-Oleum hammered. Now, most people that are doing the multi-textured packs aren't doing that. The reason I do it is because if you look on here, you can see there's a texture on there that gives it a very pitted metal look to it. So it's just selling the idea that this is made of metal when in fact it's made of PLA 3d printed plastic. Um, and it just, it just takes that a step further. I'm, it's, I'm sorry. It's not really picking up here on the camera, but you can see, let me see if I can get it in the glare. You can see there's this very light texture on there. Um, and it's subtle. If you were taking a picture from a distance, you wouldn't notice this. So if you're painting a prop for a movie, they wouldn't bother with this detail. You know, for a five second swipe by of the camera, they wouldn't bother with this. But again, you want people to come up and look at it and appreciate your work. So putting that light texture on there just sells the believability of it a little more. Uh, same with the using the, the high texture with the tr truck bed liner. Um, it gives it this cast iron feel. Um, 
it's very high texture and it just sells the idea that it's made of metal. And again, they borrowed that for the movie. So it made its way into, uh, made its way into Canon to some extent. Um, now most of this is pretty straightforward and you can find photos online showing you which, you know, what's supposed to be textured and what's, what's supposed to be smooth. Um, but some of the, the, the big one is I'm going to cover this back piece over here. Um, that's the one that se that seems to perplex people a little bit because this one has, it is all the same texture. There's no, there's no masking on here. I only have masked off the areas where I'm going to have to glue plastic to plastic. Um, and so those are masked off for that reason. Um, this is textured. This is the truck bed liner down here. This is just the raw hammered. So this is smooth where this is rough. So the ion arm will need to be taped off when you go to do the high texture paint. Um, but otherwise, it's it's pretty straightforward. The, the the rings are low texture. The main cyclotron is high texture. The entire end filter is smooth. There's no truck bed liner texture on there. This is the one that has a lot of masking and need, requires a lot of tape off. This is the, the bane of this build. This is the thing that discourages you from wanting to ever do it again. Um, but so the ribs on here are all masked off. So it'll be truck bed liner in here. I haven't actually sprayed this yet. I just got done taping it off. The whole top is smooth. And then these ones are individually masked off. So the, the raised areas should be smooth. The low areas should have the texture. This should all have the texture. Um, this in here, these little pockets in here are a little embellished on my part. Um, it's not something you see. The hose is actually going to go in here, so you're not actually going to see this part. So it's not really like it would be wrong one way or the other because you're not going to see it. This side, this side, I took a little bit of a liberty and I taped it to there. So when it gets up into the part where the hose goes in, that'll be smooth. The lower part will be textured. Um, that's just how I preferred to do it. But here, I'll, I'll do some kind of lingering shots here so you can take screen grabs if you're interested in doing this. And then as soon as I uh, as soon as I do this, uh, this little flip around here, I'm going to cover what products to actually use. There we go. Hope everybody got all the angles they needed. All right, so here's what we use. Now there's a couple of options. Like I said, this is hammered. I usually spray the entire pack with this to start with before I do my masking. So the base coat is always this. Um, and it'll be the same on the wand. Um, and then your options are, a lot of people go with this truck bed liner. This is decent stuff. You can buy this at Walmart. It's pretty commonly available. Um, but this is a pretty low texture. This really, I mean, it's 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 basically like a a super matte. It's not really like the grittiness that you would want for like that cast iron look like uh, like you're probably thinking. This stuff, they rebranded. So I wanted to show you this just because this has become a little more difficult to find. Um, Walmart has stopped carrying it. This used to be marketed as rugged truck bed liner. Um, now, the can, I can't actually find the words truck bed liner on it anywhere. There is a picture of a truck bed. It does say rugged black, but it doesn't actually say truck bed liner anymore. Um, but this... I had to go auto zone hopping to find each store had one can. I had them look it up in their system. Apparently they sell so little of it that each store only stocks one can. So I had to go hit a couple of auto zones to get enough to get the job done. I think you can do it in two if you're conservative. Um, but, uh, I would maybe buy a third can just to have on hand. Um, if you can help it, I'm, I'm sure it can be ordered online. Um, I was actually, at a loss because I, I, I almost thought they were just done making it, but they still make it. They just kind of rebranded it at some point in the last 12 months. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments section of the video, or you can hit me up on the 3D printed Ghostbusters props uh, Facebook group. Um, that's where all of the parts for this build are from is the 3D printed group. 
of course, this, you know, can still be applied to, you know, if you have a Carnivorous Creations pack or uh, GB Fans uh, uh, shell. Or if you just want to bump up the paint job on your uh, Spirit Halloween pack, I'm sure some of this can be applicable there as well. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Have a good day.